the morning to you, Diesel. Top of the morning. Top of the morning to you, too. It's another new day. We are getting ready to leave. Got all of our stuff all here and washed. You want to go outside, Diesel? Yeah, yeah, man. Let's go outside. All right. Let's just unlock all these. Unlock the fortress. All right, stay here, okay? There's nothing in the yard, right? No. All right. All right, Diesel. Give her. Give her, buddy. Yeah, so we're getting ready to uh, head out to... Final destination will be Cold Lake, Alberta. Uh, what did I say yesterday? Stopping in Melfort, Saskatchewan. Lloydminster, Saskatchewan. There's another Saskatchewan one in there. No, Lloydminster, Alberta, whatever you want to call it. And then Cold Lake. And we'll see what we're doing from there. Other than that... Other than that, it is cold out already. Like it is, the leaves are all falling. Look at that. Leaves are all changing color. Just crazy. So guys, we're gonna get this day underway. We're going to get in the truck. We're going to start the truck. And then we're going to drive the truck. Let's go. All right, getting ready to go. Getting ready, getting ready. I'm getting ready to go. No, oh, I can't. Oh, this is this is a two-handed job. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, oh oh oh. Got it. Got it, Diesel. Yes. Gotta go start the truck. Gotta warm it up. It's cold outside. Since when does it get this cold this early? It's not fair. Okay, let's put this here. All right, turn that one on, turn that one on. Oh, man. I had to turn the heat up in the house when I woke up because it was cold. It's cold, Diesel. What's going on, man? What's going on? I don't know, man. This is, this is getting cold. Like next time I come back, that tree there, will not have any leaves left on it. And that big one back there will probably be almost all gone as well. Oh, it's too bad. I just bought a lawn mower, now I won't be able to mow the lawn. <laughs> oh well, good thing I bought a snow blower too. <laughs> I'll be using that in a few weeks, I bet. Anyways guys, gotta get all my gear here. Gotta get it all into the truck on the other side of that wall over there. And we need to hit the road. No dilly dawdling. Dilly daddling? No dawdling. Is that a word? Dawdle. It's a funny word. All right, off to our right there. You see that fire station I was showing you the other day? Was that yesterday? No, the day before yesterday, right? Steinbach. Mighty, mighty Steinbach. How's everybody doing in Steinbach this morning? So we're bobtailing, as you can tell. There's no trailer behind me. We're headed to the yard to pick up the trailer. The trailer is going west. You guys already know that. Why am I repeating myself? Stop for the red lights, trucker Josh. Why? So yeah, like I was telling you yesterday, this is on the right here is the new Steinbach Credit Union. It's popping up here. It's actually a huge credit union. They have uh, huge branches in Winnipeg. Two big branches as far as I know, maybe more. What, what always got me was the fact that Winnipeg had these big, fancy, fancy branches, right? Just huge. And Steinbach, the home location, was just this small, little outdated building, but now they're redoing it is gonna be very nice, as you can tell. I can't wait to go in there and look. I don't know. But you guys gotta do that when someone builds a big, impressive building. You just gotta go inside and look at it. I don't do any banking at Steinbach Credit Union, I don't think. I used to when I was a kid, but I don't think I have any banking there. No, I don't. No, so. Man, we're gonna get every light red, aren't we? Thank you, Steinbach. Good morning to you, too. Fairway 
way forward on the left there. Did you know that Steinbach is the automobile city? It is sort of like a little mini Detroit. In a sense. They even got a Fiat. Fiat of Steinbach. The motto of the town is Steinbach. It's worth the trip. That is referring to the big city people coming from Winnipeg. It's worth the trip to come buy a car in Steinbach. And are you kidding me? I'm getting this light red too. Yep. Fine. Fine. Not like I'm in a hurry going anywhere or nothing. Whatever. Whatever. Right, Diesel? Whatever. trip and we haven't even left the yard <laughs> the trailer airbags were not inflating and I noticed this with my eagle eyes and I said hey this is not good we can't run without suspension it was very hard on the trailer and I'm sure my boss would not be happy if I broke the trailer because I didn't do a proper check so I did a check and I found out hey it's not working so I went to the shop here and the shop here is always really quick to fix the trailers when there's something wrong with it so I said hey I got no air in my bags. The brakes release, but no air. So we found out that the dock locks, the trailer was resting on the dock locks, which is uh, its very hard to explain. I can't show you right now because they're working on it and uh, uh, not everybody likes to be on YouTube, so I'll let them fix it and then I'll show you. But uh, it's, when the trailer's in the dock and you let down the air, there's these braces that come down and pretty much lock it so that the trailer's not all wobbly in the dock, right? So those were stuck down. So we got them to release, but then the shop wasn't happy with how high the airbags were inflating, so they think that there's possibly a problem with the valve, which takes air from my truck here and pressurizes the trailer, and then that valve lifts the airbags and releases the brakes and whatnot, right? So they're gonna replace that valve real quick for me, and then I'll be on my way. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? What is with this dark roast? Somebody explain to me why there's so much hype over this dark roast. Have you tried it yet? Is it good? I guess I should just try it myself and find out for myself, right? That's what everyone's gonna say. Just try it yourself, Chuck and Josh. I haven't tried it yet, I'm scared. What if it's terrible and it scars me forever and then I'll hate Timmy's? I can't risk it. So we're here, uh, at this Oak Bluff Tim Hortons, and we're going to uh, <clears throat> clear our throat first because something got stuck in there. And we're gonna hit the road. We are headed west. We're a little bit behind what I wanted to be because of that trailer repair, but we're still on schedule, so it's all good.
weather is nice outside. It is a little chilly though. It is a little chilly. Definitely. It gets cold at night. I had to turn the heat on at home this morning. I woke up, it was kind of cold. So I had to turn the heat up a little bit. This highway is actually very smooth. If I wasn't driving, two thumbs up to this highway. Like, wow. Very nice. my opinion though what the highway 16 here needs is more of these more of these passing lanes because driving this highway from Winnipeg or Portage La Prairie to Saskatoon it's all two lane and very few opportunities to pass to drive a man insane especially if you get caught behind a Sunday driver who's got the days of the week mixed up Today is Wednesday, but I bet you anything, I'll run into a Sunday driver. Somebody's got to tell him his calendar's wrong. It's cold. Technically, according to Canadian standards, it's still warm outside. I'm just whining because I'm used to the hot summer. I said this before, isn't it strange how us Canadians when it goes to like, okay, let's say it's like plus 10 Celsius right now, let's say it's about 45 Fahrenheit or so. In springtime, this temperature is hot. We're out there with our shorts and t-shirts and just enjoying it, having a barbecue on the deck. The same temperature in fall after a hot summer. We're all bundled up and shivering. It's so cold. <laughs> we're strange people, aren't we, Diesel? A strange Canucks up here. They're strange. So we're at a rest area. It's like the only rest area in Manitoba. There's one here and there's one at the Saskatchewan border on the Trans-Canada. This one's the nicest one, though it's on the least traveled highway. Not the least traveled, but you know, between the two. We only have two. We have the one and the 16. And they put the nice rest area on the 16. Doesn't make any sense. Oh, well this just puts a whole different mood on everything, doesn't it? Danger, thin ice and open water ahead. You don't say. That's what that liquid formation is over there. It's funny that they have to actually remind people that there's water over there. Just in case you didn't notice. Just in case you didn't notice, there's some water over there. And if it's cold out, the ice might be thin. Just in case you didn't notice. You notice, right, Diesel? Because you're a boss. What do you got there, man? Get your nose out of there. Oh, I found a snake. I forgot to tell you guys in my video uh, when I was telling you about all the wildlife around my area, I forgot to tell you that there's lots of snakes around my house, lots of them. Garter snakes, they're harmless. They'll run away from you and they're not poisonous. I'm just not used to, you know, walking through my yard and going, ho, ho, ho. Did not see you there, Mr. Slither. Oh, speaking of snakes, ha! <laughs> Oh, there's an actual snake here. Diesel, leave him alone. Did you see that? <laughs> you got to see a true reaction. Oh, speaking of oh, speaking of snakes, a true reaction. As I was talking about being startled by a snake, a snake startled me. I did not plan that. I promise you, I did not plan that. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Diesel, did you plan that? You planned that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna look forward to going back through that footage and seeing what my actual true, raw, unedited reaction to a une unexpected snake is. Oh speaking of snakes, what are the chances of that? <laughs> I did not plan that. Just about stepped on a snake while I was talking about Stepping on snakes. Anyways, yeah, snakes like that, they're common around my house. There's lots of them. During their mating season, whenever that is, I gotta Google it yet. Apparently they just, they're all over the place. But like you said, the only harm they do uh, is startle you. Cause you, just like that happened right there, you, you don't expect to see them, right? And then all of a sudden, boom, you're stepping on a snake.
That look, right? <laughs> we are here in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. There is the Saskatchewan flag over there. You see it? And $500 later, we're back on the road. Headed west into the sunset, but the sunset is hidden behind the clouds. It's there though, it'll, it's, it's, it's coming. You might not see it, but it's there. We're still on Highway 16, Saskatchewan. We got 130 kilometers, or about 90, 100 miles, until we got a turn. A whole lot of nothing. Here's an interesting little twist for you guys. I want you to tell me if there's anything wrong with the front of my truck. I, I can't put my finger on it. I just, it feels like there's just something wrong. Could this be it? Yep. I'll give you one guess. Did you guess moose? You're right. I hit my first moose. Just skinned it. You want to see some moose hair? Dun 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 dun. Hit him right in the butt. Just nicked its butt. Her butt. I believe it was a, a cow moose. Luckily, the radiator's okay. All the important stuff are okay. The tire is okay. However, my bumper down there and my fender up here suffered some uh, stresses today. That's just not cool. So, let me tell you the story of what happened. Let me tell you the story. Driving down the highway, two lane highway, minding my own business, on the road to nowhere. Literally, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Nothing around for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles, plus a few more miles. <sighs> Listen to some music, mm -mm, about half an hour from my destination, almost there, getting ready. And a car, the only car I've seen all night, a car comes is coming towards me, right? So I'm going this way, and there's a car coming this way, so obviously, I'm a courteous driver. I dim my lights, turn all my big fancy high lights off. Actually, I only have my headlights, they're not that fancy. But I dim them down, right, for the driver so I wouldn't blind him. Well, what do you know, just before we met, Mama Moose decides to take a stroll on the highway in front of me. Because my lights were dim and the driver coming towards me had kind of extraordinarily bright lights. He, he didn't have his high beams on, but they were really bright lights. Right at that perfect second is when suddenly, boom, there's a moose on the road. Where did she come from? Who knows, but she's there. Because there's this car coming towards me, the only car I've seen all night, I couldn't swerve into the oncoming lane or I would hit that car. That's a little worse than hitting a moose in my opinion. No offense to you animal lovers, but I'd rather hit the moose than the car. So I was left with this dilemma and this decision. Do I hit the moose? Or do I hit the car? Took me about a fraction of a fraction of a second to decide, yeah, we're just gonna nail this sucker. That moose is done. So I tried to get around it as much as I could, went right to the edge of my lane. Right, I thought I was gonna just skin past her. Skin past her. No, she decided to check to see who's coming. Mm -hmm. Boom! She bounced off me like a little bouncy ball. So I didn't hit her head on, which is good, because my truck would be finished. <laughs> I don't know exactly, it all happened so fast. All I remember seeing was a moose and she moved at the last second. And I think I just nicked her butt. I gave her a nice little push. I'm like, get off the road, eh? Crazy moose. So she's definitely probably not dead. Uh, though then again she could be because I might have hit her head I can't really tell did I hit her head or her butt they sort of look the same 
in that fraction of a second. Either way, she gone. She gone. I didn't see her after that again. Couldn't find her. She has gone. So, uh, yeah. I pulled over about a half mile as soon as I could slow down uh, when it was safe and checked out the damage. Saw the damage. Thought to myself, okay, okay. This is how it is. This is how it is. Not only am I in the middle of nowhere in northern Saskatchewan, I just hit a northern Saskatchewan moose. Right on. So reality set in. I checked to make sure I wasn't losing any vital fluids. Checked to make sure my tire was still good. Checked to make sure no uh, serious damage was on the truck. And once we uh, determined that, there, that I could still drive, uh, because I was in the middle of nowhere, there was no cell service, I felt the need to mosey on down the road another 20 minutes or so to this town where I'm in right now. This is actually my destination. I got to unload here in the morning. And, yeah, that's my story. Reported it, called into work, said I hit Mama Moose. She gone. So is my fender. But I have minimal damage. I have inspected the truck the best that I can. And from what I see, I hit the moose, just skinned him. Right on the edge of my truck right here, right? Boom! Hit it here. The whole headlight assembly broke out. And the, the moose sort of just went bing! Bounced off me like a ping pong ball, you know? Just like that. That was the noise it made when I hit it. Bing! No, I'm just kidding. It made sort of a boom. That was more of the noise, but... Uh... Yeah, so really all I need to do is get my hood replaced and my bumper. I needed to replace the bumper anyways, or at least get it painted. So hey, I'm getting a new bumper, guys. Hooray! And the hood was good, but uh, I guess I should probably replace it, seeing as it's all full of moose hair. No offense, I don't want any moose hair on my hood, so I'm just going to get a new one. Look at that, eh? Oh, nasty. Just nicked it. Can't believe that happened. So a new hood and new bumper, and that's it. So I have minimal damage for hitting a moose. That's not bad. That's not bad. So obviously I'll get an alignment, make sure my tires are all good, get the whole truck looked over, see if there's anything else. But we're gonna stay here the night because I'm not losing any vital fluids. I can idle the truck through the night. It's cold. If I need to, I'll put the bunk heater on, but uh, I'm okay. The moose is probably not okay. It was a very bad moose and it got a very big spanking from me tonight. So this is a warning to all you wildlife out there. Stay out of my way. <laughs> if I would've had a moose bumper, I could've told you the story of how it just bounced off my truck and I had no damage. But no, I don't have a moose bumper yet. Maybe I should get one. I don't know. Okay, so. <sighs> the important thing is we're safe. We're good. That's my moose story. I hit a moose. My very first moose. It was kind of a special moment. My very first moose. My first kill! I wish I wouldn't have taken so much of my truck though, but hey, it could have taken a whole lot more. So, I guess we'll deal with this tomorrow. I'll see you then at 4 a.m. Central Time here in North America to figure out what we're going to do now. <laughs>